Hey, what's going on guys? This is Arkadin, and today we're gonna to be talking about the PVP tier list of March and April, 2020. So first things first, I just wanna be clear. I am not a professional PVP player. I played up to Legend 4 in regular arena, and in RTA, I am still in Masters working my way up to Challenger. A lot of my friends are playing either in Challenger, Champion, or some of them are actually in Legend. So a lot of those guys are the ones that I ended up talking to when it came to what are the best characters overall, the ones that if I absolutely had to take up to six star, these were the ones that I thought were gonna be important. Thanks again to both Warball and Platypi from Veritas, and a huge shout out to Itzyber from Free Havoc for helping me compile this list. Couldn't have done this without you guys, and I think it's going to give us a lot more accurate representation of where we are currently in the meta. So let's get started. First of all, the way that I've ranked everything in here is S tier being absolute above and beyond god tier. We've got A tier, which are absolutely great champions, but just have something that's not quite good enough to be able to consider like full busted like the S tier. Good tier are ones that are gonna show up. You're gonna see these showing up in PvP but they're not going to be the, the most sought after bans in your RTA or, or the most sought after ones for defenses in your Guild War defense and or offenses. They can be used situationally, but more often than not, they're not. Then from C tier and D tier, we do have C being, yes, you can use this character, but only if you're a newer player. I would not suggest it in any other situation. It's just not worth it. And meme tier is straight up, literally, even if you have this character, if you're using it for PvP, don't even bother. This is just not worth your time. So number one on this list, Kron. Kron has become so infuriating to anybody who's been playing RTA. He has finally found a place in the meta again. Kron is a huge survivor with his undying buff that he gets when you take him all the way down to one health. He does tons of damage. I don't know about you guys, but I see him literally critting on my water units constantly. It doesn't even make sense. Kron, amazing, amazing fire unit. Number two on the list, Lilius. Lilius is just amazing in a lot of content. Lilius is kind of a jack of all trades when it comes down to it for an S tier. S1, she has the ability to dual attack with anyone else on your team. So that's huge, just forcing a dual attack. On her S2, she has the ability to provoke any target on the other team. Her S3 cleanses the entire team of all of their debuffs and does an AoE attack with it. All in all, Lilius is just incredible. Her kit works so well in PvP. Absolute pickup if you get the chance to six star that character. Next character we have is Akades. Akades is kind of a weird one because she does not fall under being an initial five star. She is a four star character, which for a lot of you out there is a lot easier to pull right off the bat. Her S1 does have the ability if you don't need a heal and you're on and you're, you've got the rotation down. Her S1 does have the ability to decrease attack, which is really really nice in PVP. Like slowing down damage is never a bad thing. Her S3 will cleanse the entire team and put a really big heal on all three people on your team. So it's an AoE heal, which is amazing. And then her S2 gives her invulnerability and then it also resets the cooldown of the S3. It's like just enough turns that it resets the S3. Build this character, just build her. She's super, super good for your offensive teams. Now let's move into the water teams. Water teams, you've got Seaside Bologna. Seaside Bologna is literally insane. S1, she has the ability to put a target debuff on you by hitting with the S1. S2 is a passive, so that anytime anyone on your team takes any damage at all, she retaliates with a defense breaking potential AoE ability on the other team that cannot be counterattacked. Her S3 is equally amazing, does tons and tons of damage, also gives you unhealable and unbuffable for the other team. SSB, incredible character, probably one of the most broken in the game. We're just, I'm just gonna say it, if you haven't six starred her yet, what? Like literally what? She's the best. Next on the list, if you were around during the Guilty Gear collab last year, Dizzy. She might fight slow, but she fights dirty. She has so many debuffs that she drops on her S3. She has the ability to extend debuffs on her S2. If you burn her S3, you get to use S3 into S2. It's disgusting. Then her 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 like S1 is also AoE and has a chance to stun. The character is very, very good. Very, very uh, difficult to uh, to come by nowadays. Um, we may or may not be seeing another collab. Hopefully we do see one relatively soon. 
Honestly, hopefully not for Dizzy because a lot of people aren't going to be super excited to see her come back, but you would maybe be able to see, start seeing her in RTA. So meta shift, I don't know if it's worth it. We'll see. Uh, Angelic Montmorency, this character is absolutely a, a must build, a must build for every account. Starts as a three star, has a specialty change, has you go through and do the plus 30 on the skill tree. It's you got to do it like Angelic Montmorency cleanses. She has full team immunity. She has single target immunity. The full team is if you burn single target immunity, everything. I mean, she literally has the, the full gambit and her S1 has a chance to sleep. Next on the list, we have Crow. Crow is one that I've recently found to be extremely, extremely beneficial. He's tanky, so he fills sort of a tanky role, but he also can one for one somebody off the map. So having his ability to be able to use his S3 to horse somebody once he's under 50% is pretty nuts. Crow, huge deal, absolutely worth taking up, absolutely worth building. Very, very good. Charles. So for Charles, uh, sort of like SSB, Charles is literally so beyond god tier it's it's obnoxious so the way that his kit works he has his s1 which is a normal attack his s2 is the one that you're going to mola all the way you max that s2 before anything else why because the s2 has a chance to proc off of the s1 so every time you hit s1 you have a chance to proc the s2 when you're talking about his s2 his s2 literally on top of it being the retaliation from the s1 it also strips buffs from the other characters it's nuts. It's so good. There's so few characters that strip buffs effectively and Charles being so RNG in the way that, it, that he gets hit and he retaliates makes him absolutely insane. I hate running against him. I sometimes love having him on my team when his RNG procs right. He is just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. His S3 is also really, really good. It's an AOE attack that puts defense buff on himself and then also gives his entire team attack buff. So he's an enabler. He's got a little bit of defense. He literally can just smash people, literally smash people. He is an absolute build to six star. No, no questions asked. Also in the green tier, Basar. Basar is crazy, crazy good. His S3 will hit the, hit the target. It will strip their buffs. It will then put up an unbuffable debuff on them and it will knock the team back. It'll knock the team's CR backwards. The S3 is literally insane. It's so, it's so, so good. You should absolutely build this character just for that alone. But let's just also add on the fact that he also has the ability to put miss and attack down on his S2. That's also AOE. So also super good for PVP. And um, his S1 has the ability to transfer debuffs. All in all, Basar still currently in the meta, still an S tier character. You probably want to take him up if you have it, if you're focused on PVP. Next on the list, Arbiter Vildred. Arby, as everybody likes to call him. He does a ton of damage. Doesn't really take all that much gear to build. When he dies, he reses immediately, gets the next turn, it just immediately pushes him to the front, and he's able to then S3 with an AoE attack to everybody else again. So if you're getting attacks off with him before he dies, he literally can just end teams alone. A lot of people are very unhappy with where he is in the game. I'll be honest with you, I think there are a lot of characters at this point that can kind of counter him, so he's pretty manageable, but Arbiter Vildred is a huge, huge godsend to your account, especially early. As an earlier game player, this character will do everything for you in PvP and will take you very far with very little effort, which is very nice. Dark Corvus, he requires, he's going to require more often than not several healers with him and they're just going to keep him alive and or res him. He kind of just waits for, he just, he, he'll just wait. He's a really obnoxious character that just sits there, waits until his S3 is up. And then as soon as his S3 is up, he will burn because it only costs 10 souls. He will burn it and then he will nuke somebody off the map. It's a slow go, but it's very safe. He's God tier because he is so, I mean, he's uniquely like a Crow, who's also an S tier character. He's very uniquely like that, except that he doesn't have to have low health to do it. So you can keep his health up just the, just the same. There's no like trickiness to playing him in that sense. And that's what makes him insanely got to. He's so, so, so good. Next on the list, Auxiliary Lots. A Lots, by the way, if you're watching this video right now when it's coming out, A Lots is currently in the Mystic Pools. I would say just based on how amazingly good he is for PVP, 
a lots is an absolute pull if you get the chance to he has the ability on his s2 to be able to boost somebody for a hundred percent cr basically meaning that you can take a very slow very intense dps make them lap everybody to bring to the front and then he also gives them when he does that attack buff so you'll see a lots in many 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 different compositions very specifically there to just speed somebody up and let them ruin your day Oxlots is obnoxious. Ruel of Light. Amazing character. I wish I had this character so many times over. This particular character has the is the only rezzer that you can specifically res somebody on your team. You get to choose which person you want to res when you do it. She has an S1 that heals, just much like Destina. She has an S2 that dispels debuffs and then fills up your your uh health bar as far as it can go and then gives you a shield not all the way up but it does a big heal with a shield and then her s3 is the one that gives the res and then when it reses somebody it doesn't just res them partially it reses them 100 percent and with invulnerability rule of light is literally crazy specimen says he's s tier for a couple different reasons his ability on his s3 to nuke anybody that is stunned for even more damage even more defense penetration defense penetration units are super good he does defense penetration and then wipes somebody off the map and then after that puts extinction on so if you had if you're going against somebody with a rule of light or somebody with a maid chloe or somebody that's tr that has the ability to res apoc ravi any any of those characters if you wipe out that other character with the extinction ability they can't come back he also has the ability to stun on both his S1 and his S2. His S2 is an AoE attack. His S1 is single target. So last but not least, on the S tier, we've got Maid Chloe. Maid Chloe is a hard enabler. She has AoE heals on her S2 that passively, uh, that passively heal the person with the lowest health. She also has... Let's see. She also has a res buff that she puts on people that lasts for three turns so if you die within three turns it will res you with like 30 percent health uh anywhere from 25 to 30 i can't remember which it is uh then she also when she puts up that buff on the s3 it also gives your entire team attack buff attack buff super super helpful in pvp so all in all that's amazing her s1 if you've ever seen mango before on any of his uh youtube videos he likes to say that made chloe bonks characters the bonk being the s1 hoping for a stun the stun is not a very high percentage but when it does happen it is extremely satisfying absolutely god tier she's got that res super super helpful so now let's talk a tier i'm gonna just go through these a lot more quickly because there are quite a few of them cecilia is a tank she has aoe taunt tenebria has the ability to defense break has the ability to sleep on multiple different abilities she is coming into the meta right now and is actually turning into be a ban relatively often she's very very frustrating fire ken actually very very good because he has the ability to potentially two turn you off the map sermia is also an amazing character for pvp if you get the chance to do especially in gbg a ox lots lots shermia team it's incredible you end up getting the ability to essentially wipe one person off the map then reload again and wipe somebody else off the map tywin who is basically a cr booster that gives attack and crit to one person and then also has an aoe defense break that's amazing in a lot of different comps particularly with the basar um elena is annoying especially in in defense because she has invulnerability that she can put up she has effect resist buff yen really great for having if you put a rod of amaryllis she has the ability to put a crit reduction buff and an attack buff up so she's an enabler as well as a defender as well as she has the ability to put up a shield and dispel buffs on her s2 rose interestingly is mostly there for speed she has the ability to be defensive but more than any, anything she has the ability to push the team with cr and then also has the ability to uh buff with attack buff cerise so annoying with her ability to have ever her like s3 on like a three turn cooldown and then having a stun that like locks somebody down especially a slow character definitely a tier super frustrating in rta euphine amazing for just crushing a target you can do extra damage to somebody who is buffed on the opposite team 
Um, so you'll slam them super, super hard, do extra damage. And if you don't happen to kill them, you actually get a stun at the end of it too. Um, a lot of times because, because of the crit hit damage and the attack you're going to have on that Yuffie and you're probably going to take something out anyways. Um, and then you're going to get an extra turn where a lot of people will have to decide between either silencing the other team and getting attack buff with the S2 or you have the S1 to be able to hit and potentially get an extra defense break. Very, very valuable, super great champion. The Sid, Sid is for your super fast comps. Um, you're gonna make, you're gonna bring him in. He's gonna hit something really hard, really fast. Ludwig is mostly there for cleave teams. Purgis is an annoying defender. His uh, his ability to be able to counter attack and then stun entire teams or stun at least several people on the team makes him very, very unfortunate to run against. Alencia, really, really amazing for being able to strip all of the buffs off of the opposite team. Falconer Clurry, honestly, has come back into a lot of use now in particularly RTA due to the fact that she has still the ability to do a defense break and a provoke, both being two turn. Green Armin, so you'll notice Green Armin and Cecilia up top both have three stars next to them. The three star basically means that they're a very good character, but they need to be enabled by other characters to actually make them A tier. Armin, with her S1, has the ability with the equipment to also stun a like really, really high chance to stun almost all of the time on any of these debuffed characters that come in. So Armin and Dizzy, amazing combination. Violet is super frustrating. As long as he has used his S2, which is his, it looks like an apple. As long as the apple is on cooldown, he, you don't even want to attack him because he's likely going to dodge it and he's likely going to counter attack you. Bloodblade Corinne, who is literally obnoxious. If you don't have anybody that can kill Arbiter Vildred, Bloodblade Corinne can do it very, very well. Once she uses that S3, you can burn it for only 10 souls, which is actually relatively cheap. Get a lot of extra damage. Take out at least somebody in the team, which is going to proc your ability to be able to get another turn. As long as somebody dies, you get another turn, and then you can do a crit on somebody else. She has lifesteal on her S1, and she gets a lot of health back. Apoc Ravi, she is super annoying to deal with she tends to just sit in rtas or she tends to just sit in teams and wait you're basically waiting for something to get low enough you just kind of outlast and survive take a while and once they get low enough they s3 you finish you off and bring back one of their characters because on her s3 she has the ability to revive a character and put skill nullifier on them when she comes back up assassin sid he finds his way into the a tier mostly due to the fact that he's able to go fast and steal people's souls right off the bat. Martial Artist Ken, also one of those ones that could have been considered S tier, still has really big damage. You're going to want a plus 15 with Molas just because he just does so much more damage. I'm still in process, but fit plus 15 him. He has the S1 that decreases attack. He has the S2, which is a passive so that if he gets crit, he will, he will hundred percent counter with a critical damage s3 he buffs himself with attack buff so that's pretty nice and he potentially has an aoe defense break on his s3 um, depending on how many people get hit with the defense break after the s3 is done who's the best March artist can dude super super good challenger dominial a lot of a lot of players love this character we I, we just used it in a video the other day for a pve content but honestly pvp i think is really more where challenger dominial really has a chance to shine especially in speedy comps she has a full team crit buff that is for three turns which is super amazing you can burn the s1 and she just hits like a train single target she hits very 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 hard vector tenebria i'm not gonna lie it was really hard deciding between A and S for Spectre Tenebria because Spectre Tenebria, since the rework, is so hard to deal with for a lot of people. The main reason she found it her, her way into tier A is because there are still SSBs that find their way out there. There are still characters that can do AOE damage that are going to, as long as they go before her or don't get totally locked down, can wipe her off the face of the planet, even though she can't be initially hit. But her kit is amazing. The fact that her S1 literally cannot be counterattacked means she can just straight attack an ML Ken or straight attack a Charles or anybody that may or may not have any kind of counter set. It just says, nope, you can't counter me. And as long as the S3 is down, which by the way, stuns and does tons of damage, as long as the S3 is down, you also can't, uh, <laughs> you not only can you not counter, but you also get hit on two characters every single time and a chance to get poisoned. Fallen CC. 
Honestly, just a great pick against Cleave, a great pick across the board. She has skill nullify for the entire team on her S3. She does pretty decent damage, 100% provoke on the S1, and then on the S2, giving people at the beginning of the fight, all of them are shielded, and every time she has a turn, she will then shield, reshield the character with the lowest health, Judge Kise, who is pretty uncontested at being like the best cleaver in the game right now her cleave is insane she does tons of damage on her s2 you can burn that s2 which gives her another turn and then she can s3 which also aoe's and does a ton of damage and then knocks back everybody's uh, skills back a turn crimson armin amazing uh even after she was nerfed she still has so much reduction i mean she reduces crit damage that's huge she can wear an arius that's huge she has the ability to put immunity and invulnerability on the team two turn immunity one turn invulnerability and has the ability to provoke on s1 it's hard to find that many good things in one kit crimson armin still an amazing character faithful slitica between her S2 and her S3, incredible character. Make sure to, if you have her, six star her. She seems very, very worth it. Uh, Fighter Maya is probably the best light bait in the entire game. Very useful, very useful character. And she gears out on defense. I don't know how many characters you guys have that very specifically love defense. Fighter Maya loves defense. So for all those extra pieces of defense that you have lying around that you're like, oh man, I guess I can use this on another character use it on fighter maya very good choice to six star very good character desert jewel basar definitely has an amazing kit being able to in his s3 being able to boost his team forward as well as give them immunity and cleanse off all buffs is super super good very very useful in pvp situations I would definitely suggest taking that one up to six star as well. Now, I realize this video could go on forever and ever and ever if we talk about every single thing. So once again, B tier is going to be all of these characters that have a place, you can use them in PVP. They just did not make the S tier or A tier rank um, for one reason or another. Uh, Ravi being one of those ones that's in, in here for the fires, I would say Ravi is almost A. I'd love to call it almost A because I like using her all the time, but Technically, she still is relatively situational, so she found herself in B. Um, so a lot of these ones that you might be like, oh, that one's really good. It is really good, but there are there, we're trying to be as objective as we can in recognizing that like there are many aspects to PvP, and so the biggest reason to use these tier lists at all, in my opinion, is to be able to decide like, who's powerful? Why should I use, why should I use my limited resources to take up a character? here's why here's the here's like good reasons why those particular things are great characters to six star over other six stars especially when starting pvp and then again you've got your c tier c tier definitely is i guess you can build them but you're probably not building them for pvp you might be building them for pve um but that's uh yeah that's kind of where those fall they can work but they're not they're not consistent as much uh and then of course the meme tier which is tends to be a lot of three stars but there are some four stars and five stars that do fall in there from time to time um just due to the fact that like they just don't happen to work very well for pvp also you'll notice that we have a section that is just kind of a question mark section right now charlotte both charlottes the little queen charlotte and regular fire charlotte we don't know exactly where they're going to fall on this list yet because they are both very new i will say little queen charlotte looks promising from seeing a lot of stuff um and charlotte when reading through the skills has some like very promising potential, but I haven't seen a lot of it done yet. I'll probably check it out with on somebody else just like you guys will. So that's our PVP tier list. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, love to hear about them. We'd love to be able to do this like every two months so that we were keeping you guys up to date. I also posted the spreadsheet in the link and in the description underneath this. So make sure you click that and that way you'll be able to kind of keep up with it. I'll try and update that as I know things, but uh, I definitely will be doing it every single two months. So it's pretty up to date as of right now. Hope you guys are enjoying this a lot. We also are putting out a PVE tier list as well. So that way, if you're trying to decide between, well, is this character, does this kind of line up here and also line up on the other video? Now you'll have an option for that. Uh, again, guys, thank you for being here. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy these videos. And we will see you guys, hopefully, on stream or here again next time. Peace out, baby. How am I supposed to believe hey, that? Hey, wait. Can you tell us what? You're killing me. Can you tell us what Caesarato's kit looks like today? Yeah, Caesarato's kit.
if he has debuffs on him. Do not attack him. He will counterattack you even if you're using a unit who doesn't actually put debuffs up because you had immunity and thus weren't actually changing over the debuffs. So don't be an idiot because I just was and it hurt my feelings and I hated it. It was dumb.